Miata bikini tops are expensive, around $400, and that's not even including postage, which is a lot for these because of how big they are. Is it possible to make a bikini top for a fraction of that price? From a half off to even three quarters of the price? The price of the one that I've made was Did you buy an MX-5 to put the soft top down or did you rudely get also interrupted by the wind because you live in the UK? Well, I've got something that might help. You can enjoy the thrills of the top down, but with the thrills of having a cover of your head, just in case it rains like how it does in England. So the idea is to have a soft top like this, which is basically like a bikini top. I'll bring that up on like what it looks like and a bikini top the one I'm looking at it's inspired by Project G that you have your soft top like this and it ends about here and then comes out down here and then mounts to the Frankenstein bolts so you end up having an empty back empty sides but only a top cover so here's the soft top that I'll be using I'm going to buy for 50 quid and the idea is this front bar you see like all of this I'm gonna keep that cut basically off and remove the rest of the frame and then reuse this material once again to make a prototype out of and then once it's good I'll make it out of a proper material like later down the line so my first job is to basically remove this which I've done which is just you know the, the rivets that hold the soft top to the rain rail? They just rivet it in. Just get a drill and just drill them each one of these out and it falls apart just off. And if you have had a leaky rain rail, that's how you replace it. But the next job for me is to separate the top from the frame and I've got the screwdriver. So one thing out and the next part unscrew all the screws And under here, there are two rivets, one down there and one up here, which both need to be drilled out. And so I'm working from the top downwards, so basically it's freed from here. There is a wire inside that side and that side, which I need to remove. This thing off, like the bar, as well as the second bar. And then I can just continue working it off. And to make it easier than this one, for the second one I'm going to just use this well, piece of plastic. And I'm just going to use it as a pry tool to bend the metal underneath, which is how you have to do this. And once you take that stuff, all the rest out, you have to take it at the bottom of the seal, the one you know, back of the window. So you've got like two sort of um, plastic on those plug things that you get in both these and you have to use like a trim clip removal like this to get it out and you can now watch me struggle. Okay, I just broke. 
and underneath those two plastic grommets there's this screw. Oh, there's like this metal bracket that comes out. Oh. There we go. That's one corner out. Oh, there we go. And the next thing that's holding this bar in is like, is this metal bar, which is holding the top on. So this one's Velcro. I can feel the sweat inside my palm. That was really abrasive. You don't understand the pain it brings. You don't ever want to give me way. You don't ever want to set me free You know I'm addicted to you And it's twisted you've been gifted with the evil voodoo Got me coming back for more even when I've been screwed And it's off So this entire thing is basically off Except there's one thing on this side and one thing on that side that's holding on On this side Can you see This string It runs all the way to the back To here and then runs all the way down to this spring thing and I'm thinking either take that spring out or go back to the front and remove that the, that rivet there and do that on this side and that side and then you can get the entirety of the soft top off and so the way we're going to do this focus is remove this screw there you go, and we need to get this loop out. So get your pliers and bend it. There you go. And now that's free. Get your string and then lift up your top and just feed it through the hole. And then here and the soft top it goes in, you'll follow the string. Just feed it through the hole and then feed it through on the other side. And just help it through. And like that. There your string is now free. And that means your top can come off. And what we'll do is we'll take this away and we'll use it later. And I'm gonna take these clips off so it's easy to cut because I need to cut like somewhere in this sort of area and I'll mark it out when I do it but I don't want to nick into the side of like the bottom here so I'm just gonna take this out so I've got to cut this now and I'm going to cut along this line which is just after where the string comes out so you got your little box where the string is in here and there's like a little tab and I've just put a straight line which I'm going to follow and I'm going to cut straight down there and I'm going to cut it with a saw because I'm running, I've just completely run out of cutting discs and I have ordered some more and they're not here yet so I'll start with the saw and if they do arrive I'm going to start using those because this is going to take a long time seen that before okay <laughs> okay let's just pretend that did not happen okay nope. it's back together let's pretend I did not just make it fall apart somehow okay I don't think the saw wants to saw anymore broken saw transition and I've I think I've fixed it. Hopefully it doesn't disintegrate like in the next 10 seconds. Um. It's happened again! <laughs> I just fixed it! <laughs> okay, the blade is warped. And I've fixed it again. <laughs> and let's see if it lasts. And so, 
I've got it cut in half. So let me show you where I did the cut so you can copy this as well. So you see this is the rivet thing I was talking about with the block with the wire. So the way I've done this cut is that from the top, the further sticking out bit is this little lip. And I've just done a straight cut straight down. Here's another angle. It's happened again. <laughs> and it's in two pieces. And I will continue this when there is sunlight. It's now day. So let's see what I've done. So on this side, it's cut nicely. So all that needs here is some sanding, so that's not sharp anymore. That's really the same on that side. You just need some sanding, it's quite rough there. But the cut is straight, and that's where you should be doing your cut as well. Just basically making the surface flush with the whatever this part of the frame is called. I'm just going to call it the back bit. And yeah, just make it flush with that. Sand that down. I'm going to start by putting these back on and cutting them to shape. And there shouldn't be too much because it's just metal and rubber. Put those on and then sand down everything together in one go. And then just install the hatches. So it would be like this. So you just install it and then I'm going to cut it down along where I already cut before. And I've sanded down the points here now on both sides so they're nice and smooth and well I don't cut myself on them. Now I need to install the brackets onto the bar and I'm going to put the soft top back on so then I can put it on the car to like realign and test where I need to cut and shape them, the thing. So now I'm going to put the cover back onto this but I need to remove soft top seal rail to reinstall the vinyl onto the top frame. I was just thinking I should cover all of the bare metal that I made on both sides with the bill paint just so it doesn't rust like how it is which I might just do with some spray paint that I have left around lying. I saw how blurry that previous footage was, sorry about that, the autofocus on this camera likes doing its own thing, but yeah I've got this mounted on, I put the seals back on on either side, and now to just test fit this on the car at the front. So well it's on the car, and well it looks quite shit, <laughs> the problem with all of this is it looks like that Porsche from that Top Gear episode, the one that looked like it had a collapsed tent on the roof. It's, it's a new type of box stroke, eh, with a tent on the top of it. Here it is. Look at that roof. <laughs> looks like a tramp's hat. So, there are three things wrong with this soft top at the moment. So let's start inside. First issue. It's latched in. You can see that one's in, and this one's in here. It is not closed, and so the solution for all of this, um, with, is by pushing it forwards, 
and how Project G has done this is by having a bar which runs from here all the way across the top of the car and rests against the roll bar so it pushes it into the thing and wedges it in position. Uh, the second problem is, well, this back window. So I know I have to, to obviously remove this section. My plan I've just spotted earlier is to just remove this rivet on this side and an identical one on this side. So this whole panel can come out. This plastic on here is actually gone to plexiglass. I'll end up with just having this arm free on this side, which then I'm gonna fold over like something like that and line it all up to sit on the Frankenstein bolt here and so it mounts properly against the car. And the third issue which I need to sort out is partly linked into the first issue which I can solve two and one by fixing well this sagging area which well needs to be pushed forwards and I also need to Add tension to the back by the second step, which is the second issue. But the third thing is, I think I need to make some sort of like thing to hold it up because it's quite loose, and that's going to be a bit of an issue if I drive even at 10 miles an hour anywhere. So, time to sort of get it off the car and fix those steps. And now problem two has been sorted. The back is, well, completely freed. You need to make a bar across the top part and somehow fix the sagging. I don't know how to do that. I'll figure it out. I think all the video ends right now. And so it's cut to size as you can see finally now. It's, it's a lot of trial and error, just putting on the car, mounting up, marking where I'm gonna cut it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a document with all the measurements, so like the length across, length from there down to the bottom bar, these as well, like how long I've done those. So what I've done for the cutting, as you can see, is by cutting sections like this, you know where it used to flap all the way out to the side. I also raised the window height, so it used to be a bit lower, like about down there, like around about here. I raised it up a bit by keeping the shape and I think I just contoured a bit of the sides because these are actually just flapped out so it'll be like that and then what I'll do is I'll sew them a fold across, across and then I'm going to sew them together to make it a bit stronger in the areas sew them the, where the buckle goes and everything on like on the outside of this and then have like a D loop at the bottom and mount it from there and I've only still cost 50 pounds just from this material alone. This is where all the costs are adding, where I have to buy D loops and all that stuff. So, one problem I've noticed is the middle. It's going to sag because, well, there's no support here except for the roll bar right at the back. So, one solution I've seen and a lot of people do is like a beam down the middle, but for that, you need some pipe. And that's what we're gonna use. This pipe cost me two pounds 64 and it is a 32 millimeter diameter with a two meter long poly PP. What? It's PVC pipe really, two meter long, but I don't need two meters of it, it was the shortest one I could get. I have cut the pipe down a bit now, so it just makes it a bit easier to work with, so I just got rid of the bottom half of it. And further up um, here, if you have a look, I have cut it in like a slant, like that so it just sort of locks into here with that notch at the front means that the back area will be resting against the roll bar giving it a central support and what my idea is is on the sides here because I've got this extra bit of I was gonna say leather it's vinyl I'm gonna use some of the velcro I have find a way to attach it I'm probably gonna sew it or something along there and one on this side so then they hold the center part here and this bar needs to be cut down to about this long and I also need to notch it with a, a U shape like to fit with the contour of the roll bar and so I've done the pipe as you can see it has not really got much of a notch but it's 
I tried putting it on and it sort of warped itself to the shape it needed. So it's got that port side there and this side's been dented in. But that's about all I need. Because this fits really tight in the between the roll bar and the latch part here. If I cut more out it would be really loose and I don't want it falling off while I'm driving. I've also added the velcro to well this part here. I just peeled the rest of it off on both sides because the glue was really weak. Yeah, the velcro that it came with, which is from the top, is not the best velcro, it's not very strong. It it just sort of holds. So I just need to sew these. Then I need to find a way to sew the edge parts back down. Fold this over and sew that. Let's go gambling! I can't stop winning! I can't stop winning! I might have to I might paint it because of well, the sun's had its time with it and it's completely lost its colour from sun fade. So the thread I used, which is the next cost I'll add onto the list, to sew these parts to on here, is this. This is that brand. It's a German one. I got this from eBay. It was £6.95 pence. And it's meant to be really good for weatherproof stuff, outdoor weather. It's it's meant to be coated like so it doesn't degrade in the sun or the rain and let's test that let's hope it does last more than three days outside and with the thread I used these needles which I bought from eBay again for a pound ninety really decent needles for they are yes I'm already missing one it's it's somewhere in there and I can't find it but yeah, I was using these needles to sew in the velcro on the panels but I got really bored so I decided not to use these needles anymore and I decided to buy a Toyota. Pause the video. It turns out that the Toyota is not very good at sewing through vinyl because it's too thick. I did not know that, otherwise I don't want to bought it. So it turns out I had to sew all of the vinyl by hand. You catch up with me with my thumbnails both broken and cracked from the sewing. But the sewing is complete. So it's been two days since you've last seen well me starting. This. No, no, not starting the video. It's been much longer than that. Just started sewing. So I've sewed all of this edging part all the way around down here, up around there, and then on both sides I've just done the edges too. That side there, and before you comment. I did redo that part that circled because it was a terrible job. It's not obviously the best, but it's very hard to sew through this vinyl. It's really thick. So the next plan is I'm going to get some spray paint and sort this mess out. Oh, this side here, I have um, used a bit of um, glue just because I didn't want to have um, sew lines on the back of this or on the side separately but on the other side so this side here I have on the opposite side it sort of matches fine for some reason and I don't know why and this here is the fabric glue that I was using it's called Total Butyrem and this was £2.74 but this was from eBay and all you really need to do is search up fabric adhesive and basically you can use that on here anything that's fabric adhesive would work but this is what, this is what came up for me it's okay I think I don't know how well it's gonna last I'm 
I'm gonna paint the soft top now because I've tried cleaning it up these marks just don't go I tried already and heat seems to work but then it just comes back white again so I'm just gonna try painting over the top of them I'm gonna paint it this can the cans very small it's only 200 milliliters I hope it's enough but yeah the weather's not the best today as you can probably see so I need to start painting this before it's too late So as you can tell the spray can finished just very very quickly but I was able to do the whole top half of it as you can see it looks much better up to about where that white line is and so as you can tell I ran out of paint but good news I bought some more paint And see, I've only used four cans, so that's the total cost of the cans I'll be including. Which a pack of four at this current time, I only got for twelve ninety nine because that was from that box over there. I actually have one spare because well, I only bought one can originally, which is the cracked one. But as you can see, I'm done. I painted both sides. Oh, there's a leaf on it. Damn it. But yeah, um, I painted both sides, so this side's the outside side, and then basically I just try to freshen it up and make it a bit more new. You can see the sun fading, I was able to get rid of most of it, but it physically doesn't go away no matter how much paint is not put on it. What's next after I've done painting it? Well, it's these latches, you can tell. So the straps that I'll be using are these ones, which are... I can't remember how much they are, so I'm going to put the price there. They're 38 millimeters and one meter long, and they got the D rings with them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this half of it. Oh, so you mount that in the center at following the angle of the arm, so like something like that maybe, and you sort of sew that on to the end like that the one sunny day in England is the one day I need to show something dark but as I was showing oh yeah there you can see better now so I basically just went around it so the way I did it so I started at the top here did a double stitch all the way across the top down the side once across the bottom up here down the side across the bottom again and then across the middle and then ended on that side um, the best way to I found to make sure the thread doesn't come back out after you finish is tie a knot and then melt it and then push it into itself as you can see with these molten splodges at the ends I'm gonna make a diagram for how I did this and it would just be in the description of which order I sewed in just so that you can do it too it I have tested it it seems very strong so it'll be good enough for everyone and as you can tell, I did cut the end of this and I used it as the strap part. I'm going to quickly show you how I did this. So first of all, you need to get your strap, the one that you got from before. So this is the same price as the one that you use for the well, buckles. Um, you need this, which is like a clip thing for a 38mm. So it's just a clip. You just sort of can run the webbing through the gap and then bring it over the other side so it just it's quite just it's just secure that's why I've got this one but you don't have to use that one you can use the same stuff that you use on your bags and everything you know the I'll bring a picture of it the, that type one you need these tri glides you need two of them and so what you do is you get your strap first your tri glide bring it through the tri glide like so like that thread out a bit put your other thing through the clip and then you want to just give it a little bit on the other side bring back the tri-glide 
uh, but give it enough that you can thread it and then secure it so it'll be like that that's just secure so that's good then with the rest of the strap you I'm just using the nice end so the one that was not cut originally and also when you're cutting them make sure to melt them so they just don't fray it afterwards bring that through here and just sort of bring as much as you can across so you get your triglide your second triglide I mean and then you bring that upside down this time and then feed that through most of the string is going to be in your triglide is going to be about here on the string or the opposite and then after you do that you get your D-ring, put this over, and just put that somewhere on the line like that. Now put that through the clip, and I'm just going to do it quite tight. As you see, I've brought most of it through now. It's quite a small little clip. You see the D-ring that you put here earlier. Run it back through itself, but you can now loop a lot of the extra material between itself like this then, where you have like a loop of material and then it comes back for itself, like that. And with the rest of this, what I'm gonna do is put it through the tri-glide that I put here earlier, just like that. And then put that through here on both sides. And put just these through the other D-rings, just as an extra like way to hold it down. And that just sort of lives in the inside of this bubble now. So you end up with a strap that looks like that. Before I put it in the car, I need to install everything for the last time. So that includes the front bar, the the other bar that it mounts onto the front bar to hold the soft top on, and also, finally, the, the two edge pot. I have also painted the bar with a gloss silver, no, gloss black, I mean. And it doesn't come through, but too well on camera but it just all makes it a bit cleaner a bit newer and well the next time you're going to see this it's going to be one piece and not one two three four five pieces with a pile of screws in my pocket in three two one ah. and it's all complete and so what I'm going to be doing with the string that I kept from earlier all this stuff is I'm going to just shove it in this hole and quite literally this is what I'm going to be doing just like that, it's all tucked away in here, giving a bit of extra support. Time to put this on the car and test it out. So it's on the car as you can see, but one problem. Where do these mount? That's a bit of a problem, isn't it? So most cars don't have this issue, but mine does because it never came with a factory hardtop. I need to take this bolt here out and replace them with these Frankenstein screws or Frankenstein bolts which I got the pair here and it cost me 15 pounds so I'll add that onto the list so put that in here same on the opposite side and anxiety filling up every space no privacy and silently it could build and build until you finally see whoa it's taking over damn no closure moving closer no exposure I just want to be a loner uh. Some can't stay sober looking over all their shoulders Like moving boulders just to get out of the home So, here's the bikini top that I made And there's a few differences since you last saw this If you come underneath, as you can see I've added a bit more like velcro and stuff to the, it So I added the last part at the end first Then I added this and I realised it was flapping in the wind So I added the centre one So what I'm thinking is if you do this yourself Make a really long one of just Velcro all the way up to maybe the center bar. That's all the difference I've done to it. The adjustments, well, they work really well. Same on that side. It's amazing how simple it is and especially how cheap it is. I don't remember the cost of it, but I'm gonna put that below the screen here. If you got this far in the video, comment banana. It doesn't actually modernize the car from what I can tell. It makes it feel more retro. It feels, makes it feel more like a classic car, which is a really nice feel because you have a sunshade over the top and all around you on the, all the sides it's open so it allows it to feel like you haven't got a soft top on but you've actually got a roof that's how you make one of these bikini tops so if you want to you can like and subscribe down there you can also see some other videos that will come up on the screen 
Or if you really want to see something different and DIY style like this, I made a office chair of a Honda CRV seat and that video should pop up there. And you can watch any of the weird DIY stuff that I usually do and you liking and subscribing shows me that you like this content so I can continue doing this for you. And so, well I ran out of paint as you can tell, but good news, shit that's not in frame. And it haunts me somewhere much deeper I got nightmares in my head, I fear